Hello and welcome to a new lecture on DMG materials. This time we're going to look into an exciting product, a flowable that is not just a flowable, constic. And for this reason I'd like to let you in a little bit in the chemistry behind it. And then naturally we want to know how the product is going to be used and that would be the second part of this one. So let's start with a look into the science behind it. When we think back on the, on the bonding agents, you definitely will recall that we have this development going from a fourth generation to a fifth generation to a sixth generation and then finally a seventh generation. And you may have wondered what will come next because the seventh generation already comprises everything you need for a bonding agent in one product. Now the big step, actually a big leap forward, is not to use any bonding agents anymore, to have self-adhesive products. And Constic is one of these self-adhesive products. You've seen already self-adhesive products with products like uh, our uh, self-adhesive cement, Permasem 2.0. But that's a different story. Now we are talking about restorative materials. So when we look into the chemistry and science behind this, we will find that it all starts already with the application. And in this uh, time, the application is not just applying the product. You may notice that Constic has a special application tip. It's a little bit wider to allow for a smooth application. And then the important thing is not to just apply the product, but to work it in. And this is a very, very essential step in making this product work. The reason behind this is this. We have these very special bonding uh, monomers that, that promote the adhesion. And it basically consists of three parts. There's the part on your right where you have a thing that looks like this. If you compare that to the uh, picture below, this is phosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid, if we put this over this, you'll notice, okay, it has sort of a modified phosphoric acid. And this part will do the etching and it will do part of the bonding. Then we have a linker and at the end of the linker we have something with a double bond that it used to incorporate it into the cured material. Now, why do we need to um, mix this so properly? Imagine in this pot the coffee beans to be magnetic particles that you want to attach to the outside of your pot. That would be the tooth structure. And obviously because this is a sort of a cake, the dough is pretty viscous. So it's not allowing these coffee beans to immediately go where they want to go, to the surface and do their job, but now you have to help them. And you have to help them by stirring. When you stir them, you mix up the parts that are in the middle, get them into contact with the outside, and this is exactly what is necessary to bring as many as you can of these reactive molecules to attach to the tooth structure. What's also important in this context is that you don't want a totally dry field. I don't know if you as a kid had, had these pop rocks, but if you listen to the pop rocks in the packaging, nothing is fizzing, nothing is happening, and that is because they are lacking one important ingredient. And one important ingredient is water. If you have water, this will promote the acid etching and the attachment to the tooth structure. Second thing that you're already used to um, with products like that is that you don't want eugenol in this. But that's normally more a problem with cements rather than with restorative materials. So, Again, as with the Permasem 2.0, this product needs to be refrigerated. But refrigeration, again, is something like you put it in the fridge when it's not in use. Otherwise, you can have it out all day, use it, and if your work is done, put it back into the fridge. That's about it. I must admit that at first I was a little bit skeptical because now we are talking really about self-adhesive restorative materials. And therefore we handed it out to the University of Buffalo. So the University of Buffalo did some testing with this. And the first thing you want to know is how good are we in terms of the competition. 
So what you can see here is a comparison of Constick in comparison with Vertiz and Fusium. Actually, this is about currently the only other competitors that we have. Now I want to draw your attention to these letters up there. So there's A's and B's. The A means anything with the letter A has statistically the same performance. Anything with the letter B has statistically the same performance. So what we can see is that in Denton we already have a better bond strength compared with Vertiz and Fusio. And if we look at enamel, we find OK, picture has changed a little, now we have about the same bond strength and a very good bond strength uh, as Vertiz, but Fusio has only about half of that. But now comes the important and very intriguing part. And this is, this time, we are not comparing against the competition, we are comparing how does Constick perform in comparison with a regular flowable that is used with a bonding agent. So this is the results. And we can see, okay, in dentin, um, Constick and I-bond and adhesive with tetric flow, they are all the same, even though they look slightly different. Statistically, these are the same. We have the same picture when we go into enamel. And that is really the surprising thing, that we can perform a very high bond strength with constick on enamel and on dentin, that it is better than the competition of uh, normal uh, or other uh, self-adhesive restoratives. And it performs at the same level as a bonded flowable in a regular bonding procedure. So this is very, very, very intriguing and astonishing. We have a very really good radio opacity of about 160%, so that allows you to see Constick very clearly on your x-ray. And we got six shades. And the one thing that uh, stands out a little bit is this opaque white. And as you can see, this opaque white is really opaque, so you can use that to cover up any irregularities and things that you want not to shine through your restoration. We also have the fluorescence that you're used to. I mean, fluorescence is an interesting thing. It happens not only in rocks like here. Um, these would look totally dull if you wouldn't see them under this ultraviolet light where they shine up in these brilliant colors. But you have it also in nature. I once was in Arizona in the desert and when you want to go scorpion hunting there, what you take with you is an ultraviolet light. And then you shine that light on the ground and anything that moves and shines out really brightly like this is probably a scorpion. So you catch that. But we have the same phenomenon with natural teeth. So if we have natural teeth, you can, without fluorescence, clearly distinguish this is, not a, rest this is a restoration, this is not a normal tooth. But with a proper fluorescence, and we are very good at matching that, you don't see anything, it just looks like the natural tooth. So with this, we already covered the chemistry behind it, and now I'm looking forward to show you how Constick is being used in a practical application part that follows now. So when we're talking about practical use, it's very important to visualize the indication scope. So Constick is indicated for the small class 1 and 2 restorations. The class 5 restorations, fissure sealing, which is very, very important, small occlusal cavities in primary teeth, we're going to look into this, then the usual basically for any uh, flowable composite, so underfillings for class 1 and 2, blocking out of undercuts, repairs of composite restorations, add-ons for long and short-term temporaries and repairs. So that is a very nice portfolio that you can uh, fill with Constick. Now, if you think about that, about 80% of cavities in children are usually on the occlusal plane. So that means um, in the pits and fissures, and that is naturally why pit and fissure sealing is so very important. Now, if you're a parent, you may know this. This is not unfamiliar to you. And if you're a dentist, this is almost too familiar for you. You all know this. Children are not the most cooperative patients. So anything in terms of dentistry you want to do with children should be quick and hassle-free. 
and we can do that exactly with constic. So let's look into fissure sealing. The important thing is to apply the product and then to work it into the tooth structure. And to enable you to do this more efficiently, this uh, brush is not just a plain brush. It has a cut-off tip that allows you to bring it deeper into the fissure and to get a better adhesion by working it into that fissure. And naturally, the surface should be slightly moist. And that's it. So this is a great product, not only for the kids, but also for the practitioners. And that is the fissure sealing. So what about class ones in the fissure uh, and on the, on the top of the surface of the tooth? So this is an old amalgam. We want to remove that and replace it with a composite restoration. So amalgam has been removed. First layer is applied. And again, it's always the same thing. You apply that layer then you work it in with the brush thoroughly into the tooth structure. And after you've done that, you light cure, and now you can place the restorative, the constic, in increments of about two millimeters, and then do the usual thing. You remove excess, you uh, shape it, you light cure it, and then you will polish it. And that's about it. It's very simple. After that polishing step, you'll find nice occlusion, everything is fine, the kid is happy, and the dentist is happy. And we can do this so simply because Constic encompasses all these necessary and very intriguing and important steps. The etching step, the bonding step, and the filling step into one product. And this is why, when you're next looking for the restorative of your choice, Maybe the only product you need is constic. Thank you very much.